Hello, folks. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. And I want to talk to you today about the power of play and treating mental health. But I really want to get down to what commercial video games can do in a mental health setting. But here's something that's interesting I need you to note. I don't know how to design a video game. And I don't know how to be a video game professional. I'm a medical device professional. Over the last 20 years, I built over 20 medical devices with an amazing team. We commercialized a vast array of things from minimally invasive therapies to AI-driven robotics. We got really involved with home health care and automation on those levels. Accessibility to care was everything to us. Could we enable people to take good care of themselves was the real question. And then we got what a lot of people seek in this world, an exit, an opportunity to pause, look back at what we've done and ask the question, had we been effective? Were we proud of what we'd built? We were, we commercialized a lot of things in a quick period of time and we really often thought about what it meant to be patient centric. But when it came to mental health, something that was near and dear to us, a place that we had put a lot of energy and time from light therapy all the way to uh, cerebral or to stimulation, to neural stimulation, we wondered if we had really enabled people to take good care of themselves. Certainly the world started telling us right around 2016 and by 2019 when I made this transition that things weren't going well in the world of mental health at all. In 2016 through to right now, we saw depending on what cohort you're part of, that you could be experiencing 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent of your population with symptoms of anxiety, stress, and depression. As we sit here today, these statistics tell us that almost 600 million people are suffering from anxiety and depression. We just heard and we all know that by 2030, the World Health Organization has us really focused heavily on mental health as a leading cause of mortality and our spending is abysmal in this area. So I was really contemplating, had we done what we could do? An amazing thing happened in that journey. It's, it's something to go through the process of building a company and selling it. And I met an amazing man, Mike Wilson. And he was going through the same trajectory at the same time. We were about the same age. And he was built up this great company with a great cohort of folks. And it was about to go public. It was called Devolver Digital, but he had done it in video games. And he and I got really close together as we went through this experience together, something that was sort of unique to do. And we shared a lot of the similarities of the things that really concerned us, mental health and our own journeys through it, which had been challenging at our times and for our families as well. And he was really starting to question, well, what have I done building all these games? Around this time, we heard the World Health Organization, the DSM, suggesting that video games could be a cause of health concerns, not just a symptom. But at the same time, Mike's team had just commercialized this amazing game, Fall Guys. We're hitting the pandemic and he's showing me correspondence where people are saying, this game has saved my life. This game is helping me access care on a whole other level. And he implored me, to, we've got to get this out there. We've got to share this data. I'm a medical device guy. And so what I decided to do is tell him in gory detail what it means to commercialize a device. I told him about quality systems and regulatory, the FDA, the FTC, right? And that having the data wasn't enough, what it meant to run a clinical, what it meant to run these companies in a certain way. Mike then pointed me to this uh, post that was done by Arianna Huffington. I'm gonna read this one directly to you. The power of play. There's no better way to help people improve their lives than meeting them where they are. And where three billion of them are is on gaming platforms. He caught me right there. That's that accessibility to care that I wasn't sure that we'd been able to do before. So we started telling the story. We got out and we dug deep into the data. And what you're seeing here is what is actually out there in studies, some of which that were actually designed to show that video games are not good for you. How about 69% psychological therapy outcomes are improved with video games? 24% of boys who play games have fewer mental health conditions and issues. And 90 minutes of play a day 
made you a healthier individual, both mentally and physically, and your self-esteem was up. When I saw that, we just got determined we had to do something with this, and we got rolling. Mike did another amazing thing. He did his call out to industry, and we had video game experts show up, the likes of which you've never seen. Shipped millions of dollars and millions of titles, right? These folks were pros to the top level. I reached out, and I was a little scared to reach out to folks like you, my <laughs> cohort. It was like, hey guys, do you want to talk about video games? And they came running. Quality, regulatory, the best med advisory team I had ever been able to assemble, zero dollars. They all just came to help. We started analyzing and looking at the data and figuring out that we could propagate these games, get them out, and get this amazing group of people that Mike knew so well, these game developers, and get them empowered to build these games. So we did it. Mike called, and thousands of game developers answered. 108 games were developed, and these were sweet and beautiful things, but not one of them was what we were asking for. <laughs> and this is exactly where we found a teachable learning moment. The game developers themselves started to teach us about what it meant to make a game. The whole process, 40 years of what was their own version of a behavioral science, it started with this kernel of play and fun and it expanded all the way out to the secondary game mechanics, scoring, badging, social, but it started with play and fun and landing you in a place that was dopaminergic, dopaminergic which is hard to say, but not a bad word. <laughs> so what we realized, is these folks, when they started to gamify some medicine or build a therapy, they all took a step back. They all started being deferential to the therapy designers and to the doctors, and they lost that kernel. They took a therapy and they tried to make a game and all they were left with was the secondary game mechanics, the scoring, the badging, the social, the stuff that keeps track of whether or not you did well, but not anything that makes you feel well, right? And that's when it hit us. We're not gonna be able to just help other people do this. We're gonna have to take this super team that was advising and we're gonna have to build some games and show them what we're talking about. We're gonna have to start with that kernel, with that commercial game and move ourselves into a therapy. We got a lot of help. This is an amazing study and we've got a great social team. If you wanna go out on LinkedIn, we've posted all of this. It's all available. We're not playing for proprietary. We wanna reach as many people as possible. Look at this data from this meta-analysis. Video games are very effective, stress, anxiety uh, treatments. In some cases, they're surpassing medications, EMDR, and standalone physical therapies. But here comes the important point that we're here to help people with. Not all commercial video games are created equal, and their effects strongly depend on specific characteristics of the game and the patient and where they are in the patient's journey. I bet you're all thinking, you know what it is then. It's like, oh, we need those brain games. And we need to gamify that, that certain mechanism of action that people otherwise didn't want to do. We got to make something not fun, fun. You can't do that. It turned out action video games, hold on, first person shooters. They don't make shooters, but they sure do help people think the right way about themselves and cognitive on a very different level. What we saw, was there plants versus zombies, your animal crossings and your tetrises were some of the most effective. And why was that? What did we see? We needed to get you in a place where you were having a good time, you were dopaminergic, and we needed you thematically connected. When you walk into one of our games, you might go there because you think, I have a mental health concern, but if 30 seconds in, you're not having the best time of your life, we've lost you and we've lost the therapeutic potential. So what does that mean? Here's the formula. Everybody keeps their formulas to themselves. Here's our formula. You need to play in the thematic realm of the game. You can't break that fourth wall. That means it has to be a good game first. And the game mechanic has to overlap with the treatment mechanism where the challenge condition is managed over time so somebody doesn't get bored, isn't too hard, and they stay engaged with the game. So now we're out and we're having conversations with people and we're trying to let them know Therapies can't just be gamified. We're not saying that gamification isn't valuable, but if you want the results that we've been seeing from these commercial games, the most captivating games need to be medicinalized. And if you don't think I was scared to come up here with a made up word in front of a whole bunch of doctors and stuff, you're wrong. But it, we're doing this so we can 
differentiate, take back some of these words, right? And say, look, we want to pr preserve and enhance this really engaging mechanism and the compelling nature of the games. What does the future of this look like? Well, it looks like immersive medicine. Since we started doing this, we've had an amazing reach out. There's over 50 people working on this now, very few of which are getting paid. They're just trying to see how far we can take this, how far we can engage one another. We've got pharmaceutical companies that are starting to see when we play these games that we can reduce someone's immune reduct or resistance. You know what that means? That means if you've got a therapy or a drug that didn't make it through trials because the dosage had to be too high, we might be able to give you a companion game or app to get somebody in the right pace for that therapy. Deliver it with less side effects because it's a lower dose and you're in a more bioavailable place to receive the therapy. This is the power of play. We need to open ourselves up, be careful about the academic arrogance, and take a look at these amazing designers of these games and see if we can't learn something where we truly can gamify medicine in a way that can benefit everyone. Thank you very much.